Hey there, hope you guys are well. So I wanted to talk today about something pretty light. Um, I guess it could be contentious if you think that the things I talk about are you know, terrible or wonderful, but I wanted to talk about my favorite shows that are led by females, uh, which encompasses actually like quite a significant portion of the shows that I really enjoy watching. So the inspiration for this was very simple. I was taking a break from a lot of filming and I was sitting on my couch, this couch, and I was watching the TV show Girls, the HBO show with Lena Dunham. And this is a show that I've watched probably twice through, but I never actually saw season six. So I'm like binge watching season six. And I was thinking, this is a great show. And most people I know hate this show, um, but I, I think it's really quite wonderful. So I, I was thinking about it as like, are there any other like female centric shows that I really like? And uh, I came up with six. And then there's a few others that other people like that I, I don't really like. So I'm gonna talk about them, share them with you. Um, thank you for joining if you are, if you happen to be here live. So, Girls is a great show. It's really, uh, it, it's, it's edgy, it's, um, it's dirty, it's gritty, it's about terrible people. And I think I have this attraction, and you'll see there's a few others on this list about terrible people. But I, I like shows that portray people, not as cartoons, but as, I don't know, like complex and multifaceted, um, like terrible people. It's not that the essence of the characters and girls are like terrible, it's, you know, deep down they're good, but the show really showcases in a sort of observational humor way, their terribleness um, or like their, uh, their bad qualities. And um, it's kind of like off the wall humor. I like TV shows that have a heavy focus on character based humor. Um, so it's not about punchlines and jokes, but it's more about just, um, yeah, just, just observational humor. Just it's the character themselves who's funny as opposed to just delivering a great line. So girls, top of my list. And the second one I'm going to mention is in a totally different direction, but it also has girls in the title. And I feel like I would, it would be terrible to leave this one out is Gilmore Girls. And I resisted watching the show for a really long time when I was younger. I was like, ah, oh, cheesy show. It is a cheesy show, but it's a good cheesy show. It's fast paced. Um, it's, it's like, it warms, it's like, it's like comforting. It's like comfort food, but television. So I've watched Gilmore Girls through quite a few times. Uh, uh, I remember watching it through when I was pregnant because I just felt like I wanted a TV show that was like a warm hug. Um, that show was like a warm hug to me. I really enjoy it. It's good writing. Um, I know that uh, Amy, I'm not going to be able to come up with names off the top of my head. The writer, Sherman Palladino. Amy Sherman Palladino. Ah, I just remembered. There's another great show, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. This was not on my list, but it's the exact same writer. So Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, um, also wonderful. Uh, really witty, fast-paced, about a woman comedian. Um, it's like an edgier version of Gilmore Girls. Gilmore Girls, Girls is very like like tame, like PG at absolute most. Whereas uh, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel goes a little bit uh, edgier, but it's still it's still that same kind of like campy, um, colorful humor that I really like. So that's a one I totally forgot about until just now. Uh, I going back to the terrible characters thing. I really like Fleabag. Fleabag is a great short show. It doesn't like overstay its welcome. It's two very short seasons. I think in some ways the first season is funnier, but the second season is more interesting. Uh, but it's to the point. I think there's like six or seven episodes per season. And the, the writer of the show and the lead in it, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, I hope, I'm probably gonna butcher these names, but she is, uh, she's so witty. Again, it, it's it's kind of like raunchy humor. Um, it's a little bit, uh, I, it's a little bit edgy, but um, yeah, it, it just, it's a cool show. It, it's a little bit different than anything else I've ever seen. It doesn't stick to a formula. Um, and it's about bad people who are trying to be good people, I suppose. Jessica Jones is another one that I really liked. I actually haven't finished it though, um, but uh, I've seen the first two seasons. I really liked uh, David Tennant in the first season. I thought he was a wonderful villain. But um, yeah, another another solid show just in the, the darker, broodier, um, kind of like tortured superhero side of things. Um, and then on the other side of the spectrum, we have Grace and Frankie, uh, which is just like, it's like silly and cheesy and like fun. It's not like, uh, it's not like I'm rolling on the floor laughing when I watch that show, but I enjoy it. Um, it's a good, I, I would call it up there with Gilmore Girls in terms of like it's comfort food for television. Um, and then uh, going back to the edgy, 
is Broad City. So I had a friend of mine who introduced me to Broad City. It's uh, written and starred by two, um, I think they're like New York based women comedians. And it's basically just a totally pointless show, which is what I like pointless shows too. shows that don't have like a, like a clear arc. It's not like it's about the story. It's just basically like two kind of terrible people uh, who were kind of funny uh, existing in New York and making bad life choices. Um, and not a lot happens, but it's just, uh, it's very entertaining all the same. So I like, I like shows like that. I like pointless shows. What does that say? Um, and then finally, I wanted to throw in a childhood favorite. So a show that I grew up watching that has a female lead is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And, uh, yeah, that's another one that I've watched, um, a million times. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's worth a rewatch. There's a lot of filler episodes. One of the problems with shows from the 90s um, is that uh, there was a, there were 22 episode seasons. So if you have seven seasons, 22 episodes each, um, except for the first season, they kind of just had to like stick to a schedule and pad a lot of the show. Buffy's one of those shows, it's not every episode that's great. Um, some episodes are very good and some episodes are like, okay, I could see you're just trying to like fill the space here. So, um, but yeah, still, um, still one of my favorites. Now, the ones that other people seem to like that I wanted to mention, they're kind of like honorable mentions. So The Handmaid's Tale, really popular on HBO. Um, and I have friends who like it. I like it. I like the show. It's a great show. It's really well shot. I really like, I don't know her actor's name, but I really like Peggy, Peggy from Mad Men and Rory from Gilmore Girls. They're like um, two of my favorite actresses in the show, but it's so dark. Like it's so... It's so upsetting. Uh, I would just watch that show. Um, I just watched the first season and then I had to stop. But I would just cry. Like every time I watched it, it was just like bawling my eyes and I'm like, I can't do this to myself. This is too, it takes too much of a psychological tool. So great show, but I can't really watch it. I don't know, maybe someone could tell me if the second season is like less intense, but I think from what I've heard from other people, it just kind of keeps getting worse as it goes. Uh, all right, and then uh, Sex and the City, another really popular show I never got into. Uh, I actually never, got into it because I never watched it. I haven't watched a single episode of Sex in the City. And at this point, it's been so many years. And like, is it even like, what's the point uh, of going back to that one? So I guess I could be talked into it. But I'm not a huge fan of sitcoms and laugh tracks and, and stuff like that. So I don't know if that'll be one that I revisit. And finally, one show that I know is uh, women centric, but I haven't gotten around to seeing is Glow. Um, I really like um, this is going to be my good like uh, name recall, but what's her face from community, the brunette, the lead in it. Um, she's really cool. Uh, it sounds like it's a great show. I just haven't, haven't watched it. So those are the, the, I, I like recommending shows to people. And usually when I watch something, it's because someone else has recommended it to me. Um, I usually just like randomly browse Netflix or, or like HBO or whatever. And just, and just say like, ah, what well, looks interesting. It's sort of like a, like a word of mouth thing. If I have like a few friends tell me, then I'm like, okay, maybe I'll actually um, get around to watching this. So virtually everything I've ever watched is because enough people have mentioned it over and over. So um, highly recommend if you like uh, raunchy humor. Um, Fleabag is a great one because it's a low commitment because it's only the two seasons. It's really short. And um, <laughs> Broad City is maybe not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but it's kind of fun to watch. It's very low commitment because you don't even need to know the plot because there really isn't any. Um, and then Girls, I think it's a, is a great like raunchy show too. Um, oh, I wanted to make an honorable mention as well. Uh, I would consider this one women centric is The Good Place um, with Kristen Bell. So it's not like like super women centric. It's pretty balanced in like the, the male and female character roles. Um, but Kristen Bell is a big part of that show. Um, I, I think she writes in it. I can't remember if I'm messing that up. Uh, but I find that show charming and interesting and uh, um, uh, just very like colorful and fun. So anyway, those are the uh, the shows that I would recommend to you guys. Let me know if I've missed anything. You can leave a comment if you've watched something that's really good that has like a really great female lead or something like that. Um, and that would be wonderful. So I'll talk to you guys later.